It's not what I know, it's who I know. And my special guests on the quest are the people from the MS Society, Sue Kelly and Brandy Wessel. I just want to break out and say, Brandy, you're a fine girl. Okay. <laughs> All this week, we've been setting aside our normal broadcast, which is usually about money, honey. And now it's about our support and trying to generate awareness about women with MS. And I have to say, in our practice, and many of our brokers will listen to this, and our agents, and remember the show's listened to by over a quarter million of advisors, they're listening to this saying, Steve, what are you doing the show for? But every quarter we try to set aside some kind of a charity so that we can highlight, and the reason we're highlighting this is because I, I, I can't say this from a clinical point of view, but I can say based on my just Googling everything I could find, I really couldn't find any one disease that seemed to target women so much. And Sue, I know that when you, we talked about your testimony about you, your first days finding out that you had MS and how that dealt with your family and how that dealt with your children finding out and how you dealt with it all the way around. And then we talked about management drugs. If you missed any part of our show, you need to go back to Sue, watch Sue and the explanation that Brandy gives on some of these things for, because she deals with this on a, on a state level. I'm trying to put my arms around the basic concept of who gets MS and I'm, I'm struck yesterday by talking about a nine-year-old girl getting MS so young in her life. I mean, usually I think you have to wait till your 20s. But really, MS doesn't hit any one vocation. I mean, it's across the board. You don't see white collar over blue collar. It's a, it just hits every strata of society. Absolutely. I mean, I think we do tend to see more teachers and nurses because MS affects 75% women and women are teachers and nurses. Well, let's stop there for a second though. So based on that though, if, if you were just to do a demographic on female teachers and female nurses, mm -hmm. you're saying that that number, that stat is that, I mean, it's that pronounced, it's that large. I. I haven't seen statistics mm -hmm. based on it, but just anecdotal, but your anecdotally, yeah. you know, more women are teachers, more women are nurses, so more teachers and nurses have MS. Mm -hmm. How does that affect? I'm trying to think about. Let's talk about how does that affect an RN? You're a registered nurse. Mm -hmm. You go to work every day. You're supposed to go to work tonight. Yep. We're trying to stop you from going to work tonight. <laughs> At least Brandy is, and we don't want to call from your husband tonight, so we're trying to get you out of here. But I'm trying to be good. I'm trying to be good, and I'm curious though, how does that affect an RN? How, how, what's your deal? How does that? What do you have to get yourself up for? What do you have to prep for? Well, I work night shift. I work seven at night till seven in the morning, and um, twelve hours. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and ends up being about thirteen. With but, yeah. MS being a fatigue issue, mm -hmm. how do you do twelve-hour shifts as an RN on the, the graveyard shift? I make sure that um, I sleep in. I'm not a good napper, so I sleep in on the days that I go to work. Um, try to pace myself during the shift, but that's not often possible because circumstances don't let you do that. You're not in the ER, are you? No, I'm an OB. Oh. Well, Mommies that's, and babies. Well, that, that's like a tick below <laughs> ER, right? <laughs> I mean, as far as the gravity it, of the situation. It depends on the day. I'm not in labor and delivery, but mm -hmm. after mommies and babies deliver, an hour later we get them. Mm -hmm. and just kind of help them become a family. If you had to talk about one aspect of your vocation as a nurse that MS has affected, what is that one issue? You're on the floor now, you're working the OB at night at nighttime, what is that one thing? I think what it's affected most lately is my left leg doesn't join the party quite as quickly as the right one does sometimes, and especially if I'm really tired mm -hmm. or stressed or I haven't eaten, it's going to lag a little behind. So if that emergency light goes off, I'm going to be walking real fast to get there, but I probably won't be able to run to get there. The other people are mm -hmm. going to get there before I do. Mm -hmm. um, are your and, colleagues aware? Yes. Okay. And what kind of support have you had from your fellow fellow RNs and physicians? They don't they don't treat me any differently. Mm -hmm. um, they they know it's a challenge, but nobody's walking around mm -hmm. going, "Oh, poor Sue, you need to sit mm -hmm. down." Um, I'm expected to carry my weight, and I do. Mm -hmm. Do you see that as one of the remedies for living with MS, which is, I'm not going to be babied? I, yeah, for me, that's, that's really yeah. big. Um, and I think for a lot of people, they don't want their care partner or, you know, significant other, whoever, to do things for them. Mm -hmm. We want to do it ourselves. And if we need help, we'll, we'll ask. ask you. 
yeah, that's that's the issue mm -hmm. though. We tend not to ask, but that, but you mm -hmm. learn as time goes mm -hmm. on. You know, I'm going to ask for help because people do want mm -hmm. to help, but I want to do as much as I can myself. Brandy, you have all these clients, 800, and this is just the state of Arizona, 800. 8,000. Eight, I'm sorry, 8,000, my zero, see, I'm fading already. <laughs> 8,000, and that doesn't include families, and that's no. just in Arizona. Does, is Sue's story typical of the stories you hear? Because people all have to still go to work. Yeah. They you know, have families to take care of. So what, uh, do you see that, what she's saying? I do. And again, I, I think it, that it really runs the gamut. I mean, we do have, you know, clients who are, are unable to work anymore and, you know, they're on disability. And then we do have the clients who have gone to part time. And then we have the clients that are, you know, working full time and carrying on, you know, their, their life as, as they've always known it. So it really does run the gamut. And I think this goes back to what we were saying yesterday where um, this disease is so unpredictable. You know, it's not even unpredictable when you're looking at multiple people. It's unpredictable when you're looking at that, that one person. So, mm -hmm. Sue mentioned, Brandy, RNs and teachers. On your database of 8,000, do you see a lot of female teachers involved in having this disease? You know, here locally, I have I have met quite a few teachers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do they get through their day? I mean, they're dealing with kids. This is like six, seven hours nonstop. It's like, you know, uh, and, and I think kids are much more, let's just use the word, not conservative in their <laughs> approaches and they're not as kind as they could be. And uh, a lot of these kids have ADD and they're running off at the mouth <laughs> and they're disrespectful. And I'm no one I'm talking about my kids, of course, but I'm just talking about everybody else's kids. But, but do you, how do they get through that? I mean, they, they're already, got a, that, that job's a challenge. How do you get through it with MS? Well, and you know, I don't think that there's there's one particular answer for that, but what we do as an organization, I know you've mentioned that, you know, we, we raise a lot of money for research, which mm -hmm. we contribute nearly $45 million every year towards, oh. towards MS research. Is that just... The That's national the national organization. We cr you, we fund forty five million every year. Million. Now, on the flip side of that, what we're doing here locally, because some of the dollars stay here locally as well, and that's for every state um, that has an MS chapter. Mm -hmm. And we um, have different programs that we host to help people manage some of their sy symptoms, manage some of their fatigue. So we we get them together, and we not only form a support group for them, we have um, different programs like yoga and MS. These things, even though it's not a direct answer of this is how you'll be able to get through the day, it, it helps them. It helps them manage yoga, their symptoms. Yoga, some kind of a, it's like a physical therapy type thing then? Yeah. And okay. so, I mean, have you heard of that before, yoga? Yeah, I do, do yoga. Do yoga, <laughs> but, but specific yoga to MS, for MS. You have to, I mean, yoga is a wonderful exercise for people mm -hmm. with MS, customizing it to what your particular mm -hmm. needs are. Um, a lot of people think yoga means putting your leg up behind your head and really... And it's not going to happen in my <laughs> stage of health. Not going to happen in mine either. Okay. Um, but laying down and doing deep breathing and just mm -hmm. centering yourself, that's mm -hmm. doing yoga too. And that can make a big difference in living well with MS. Are there other things like yoga that you see your clients in Arizona where, where you're, you see them, uh, they participate in regular workout sessions oh, yeah. or... Tai Chi, Pilates, tai yoga, we really, we hear it across the board because like mm -hmm. I said, they're, they're looking for anything to help them, you know, manage their symptoms, mm -hmm. just like I think anyone would if they were, you know, having a particular issue, you know, you're looking for something for that, that release, you know, maybe it's something that doesn't help you directly while you're there teaching those kids, but mm -hmm. you can think back to your yoga class the day before and let those stressors out and really it helps you manage those symptoms. Well Brandy I have to ask you a very personal question with all the thousands of listeners that we have and our quarter million advisors. You don't have MS do you? I do not. Why are you involved with the MS Society? Um, you know, I'm involved with the MS Society. I have several um, close friends who have MS, and I've seen firsthand how this disease um, affects people, and it's something that I'm extremely passionate about. And I love the thought of going to work and knowing that we're making, you know, strides with research, we're making strides with programs here locally, and we're really making a difference in the world. You know, we really are funding this much, much research, and um, helping these clients, you know, um, get through their, their everyday life as well as their families. It's a, it's a very empowering thing. 
But you know what? You could have done that as a social worker. Why this specific society? Why this specific disease? Where did the heart open? Oh, how did you open up to this? You know, I had heard a lot about the MS Society. Um, I actually did an internship when I was at ASU, and um, it was at a local nonprofit, and that kind of got my feet wet in the in the nonprofit. I had done a lot of volunteering before, um, but it was definitely something that I saw the good work that the MS Society was doing, and I saw. Um, you know how how well they utilized the funds that they had and it really was going towards the research and the programs and I wanted to be part of that nobody in your family has MS no I just this is why I bring shows like this to you regular people like Brandy Wessel doesn't have MS doesn't have it in her family isn't given to these things but she saw something doing your graduate work I mean at ASU this is the kind of thing that this is exactly why we want you to come to the luncheon because your heart may be open to this. Somehow, some way, you'll be positioned, you're saying, I need to get involved with this, just like you did. And you can do that April 28th at the prestigious Arizona Biltmore. We're gonna have a luncheon that's gonna be fantastic, Women Against MS Luncheon, scheduled for that Thursday, April 28th. Coming up in our next segment, we're gonna talk about some of the four different forms of MS.